Hey guys, uh, my name is Holly Baxter and this is Lane Norton and today our office has changed. We are sitting outside because uh, we are currently having a heap of renovations done on our house and uh, the noise factor this morning has been a little interesting to say the least. There's like every noise you can imagine. Um, and now we have wind. And now we have wind and bird sounds, but it's quieter. It's actually much quieter. So uh, this is now uh, week is it 16? Yeah, you've been reverse dieting for 16 weeks. 16 weeks of reverse dieting, so it's actually update 14 if you've been following along sequentially. Uh, actually, in it's by series. update 13, I think, because okay. we didn't do an update when we were in Australia. That is right, okay, yeah. It'll be update 13 if you've been following along. So, uh, for the past two weeks, uh, Lane and I have been uh, really, really lucky and fortunate to be able to travel to Australia. Uh, we had the Australia tour, so our first seminar was in Sydney uh, where we did a, uh, an evening uh, seminar and then we did a full day of training camp on Saturday. Yep. And then we head up to... At Warrior Performance. Yeah, at Warrior Performance. Um, Shout out to our friends Shannon and Lauren for yeah. letting us use their gym. It's a great spot. Uh, yeah, Warrior Performance, they are awesome. Uh, the owners are just lovely people. They have these two huge dogs. What kind of dogs are they? I think those are English Bulldogs. English Bulldogs. They're the fattest little cute things I've ever seen and they grunt all the time. and you get boners. <laughs> they get boners all the time too. It's so disgusting. <laughs> Cute dogs though. Uh, anyway, moving on. Then we went to Brisbane on a Sunday and did. We had a fantastic sold-out uh, seminar in Brisbane. What was the name of the gym? Oh, we went Valhalla, Valhalla Strength. Strength. Right. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Did you Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I I really enjoyed it. Um, just a, a little bit difficult to keep up with everything while you're traveling, uh, which I think you're going to talk about. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, I think we found with you that you do best when you have structure and routine and don't really get rocked out of that boat. Yeah, I think um, we might as well start talking about it. So um, I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges um, for myself and for people that I work with as well um, is trying to remain adherent to targets. And this is whether you are trying to gain muscle. Maybe you're on a, a muscle gaining program and you're meant to try and eat more. Uh, you might be on a fat loss program and you're in a deficit and you're trying to eat less. Whatever the goal, I think one of the key things that um, people kind of butt heads with is the fact that they are busy and you know life gets away from you. And it, it is one of the biggest uh, challenges I certainly find to try and make adherent when you've got a billion and one things going on. Would you agree, Wayne? Yeah, I mean, you. you... Uh, Dr. Corey Probst talks about this, that you've only got so much kind of uh, willpower yeah. that you can pull from. Mm -hmm. And so when you're, you know, we don't, if we're in our, our routine and we're in our structure and uh, things are set up exactly how we want them, um, most people don't have a problem with adherence. It's when they, life gets stressed, yeah. the kids are sick, you're traveling, yeah, right, uh, you're you don't feel well, uh, those sorts of things. Yeah, and or you're, you're having to eat out. Um, that is something as well. Sorry about the... It's following you. <laughs> the sound I can see is your following eye twitching me. right now. Uh, yeah, so like trying to eat out. Um, I know a lot of people travel for work, for work or they don't have the scales or they've got parties, functions. That this is, is what, life. Yeah. It really is. That is, um, you know, everybody has these problems. Some people are busier than others. It's... it's um, you know, some people travel more than others for, for their type of work. So I think one of the most important things um, is trying to find a strategy to not let that um, get the better of you, which is certainly um, something I've actively had to try and fix. And I actually am working with uh, Dr. Corey Probst right now um, to try and help manage some of these, um, these stressors in my life so that they don't uh, manifest themselves in the way that I eat. Um, which has been a struggle for you in the past. Anytime yeah. you get thrown out of your rhythm, uh, that would kind of negatively affect you. And I, I think you did better traveling this time mm -hmm. with stress. Um, you really haven't had a, like an episode where you've, you know, really, really... Yeah, not uh, binge eating or anything like ate that. Your, ate your feels. <laughs> um, but you were, you were you, looking over your logs, you were higher yeah. than what your targets were while you were traveling. Absolutely, um, but what I think... Do you, what do you ascribe that to? Is that... Is that that you were hungry? Is it that you were using food as a comfort? Like, what, what do you think caused I, that? I think this week while, and the last two weeks while we've been traveling, um, 
We have been so rushed for time that um, to try and seek out like really low calorie options or like foods that make you feel good, I guess, um, that I can cook, that's been really limited. So the frustrating thing about when you are traveling or having to eat out at restaurants is that they are just so much more calorie dense. Um, I have no problems going through a menu and picking out the lowest calorie option um, or asking for a low calorie option. Um, but it is just a lot more difficult than when you're in your home and you can, you have choice. Sometimes you don't have a choice and you just have to make do with what you can. So I think the foods that we've had access to, um, you know, the last few weeks, every single meal occasion, unfortunately, has been more calorie dense. So. When it comes to my macro adherence this week and last week, it was a little over. I feel like Australia may just have calorie dense foods because I actually put on a kilo and usually I don't gain weight when I travel. I'm usually really? able to maintain. Yeah, I'm, I'm up about a kilo. Yeah. So. Well, I think we, we kind of went out of our way. We purchased more high calorie snacks. I know Lane absolutely loves Tim Tams, uh, like the flavored ones. We can't Yeah, get but those. that's so different than me usually. No, but like you, you might you might pick something else and you'll weigh them out or you'll weigh out your yeah, snacks. Yeah, I didn't have a food scale. So, so we didn't have a food difference. scale. We can, we're pretty good at eyeballing things, but I think in times of stress and being busy with work, you're, you probably just let, you know, those parameters, they kind of push themselves out a little bit. So, yeah, so portion size is probably bigger. Give you some props. You didn't immediately say, we need to stop reverse dieting, I want to cut. Although you did get more focused on when you want to do a show. You started talking about that a lot more. I did notice that. Um, yeah, so I think, uh, you're, uh, I think you're close to the end of your wits. No, I'm not. You, you'll be no? very impressed with what I'm going to actually say this week about this week's reverse. But yeah, I think, um, so you mentioned my focus became more more around, you know, oh, I want to diet. I was actually just really thinking about how I strategically want to do this because I know, like, uh, if I don't plan ahead for this competition, I'll probably get to maybe 15 weeks out and be like, okay, now I'm going to have to do a continuous um, calorie right. deficit. And that's not an optimal strategy if you want to maintain your lean body mass. So I really wanted to emphasize um, in my upcoming um, contest prep diet breaks. So that's probably why I was a little bit more focused and talking about it because I want to yeah. get ahead of the game. So it's not that I want to finish my reverse, but um, I had a look back over my log um, and I still logged every single day that we're away. Um, but I think what I did a really good job of was seeing higher numbers and not letting it really just consume me. Whereas previously I would be so stressed out about it um, that I would let it kind of dictate how I felt. It would uh, dictate my mood. And um, I really tried to just go, well, you're doing this for a reason and um, it's going to benefit you down the track. So the first week while we were away, um, we had devised uh, having a couple of lower days while I was traveling. Do you remember talking about this? Yeah. And then I had five higher days um, or back to normal. Yep. Um, to kind of counteract some of the lack of training from travel. And that week went really well. Uh, I actually was adherent for that first week of traveling, looking over my food logs. But this past week, so that was uh, whilst we were down in Melbourne. So Lane, what was the event you decided to talk uh, about? The, yeah, I spoke at the um, Ultimate Evidence-Based Conference that was put on by JPS Health in Melbourne at the Melbourne Convention Center. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was with uh, Dr. Mike Israel, Dr. Eric Helms, uh, James Krieger, Alan Aragon, Sohi so Lee, Brett Contreras, uh, Dr. Brett Contreras, mm. Nick Dumanello, um, and, and that was awesome. But um, yeah, it was That hectic. was a really busy schedule. So like the time commitments that we had to be in and kind of present uh, were a lot greater than some of the other things that we've had. Well, we've maybe had half a day to kind of go and get some exercise in or um, prepare, grab some food, do some cooking. This was like all day. So training pretty much zero <laughs> around that, that time. But that week, um, I still chose to increase my macros. So I would have liked to have gone up by maybe 50 calories that week and reviewing my targets. This past week, every day, I was sitting at around uh, 2,400 calories. Um, and my target for this past week was only 23. So I was 100 calories over every day. So I was 700 calorie extra, uh, excess over the course of the week. Now, the interesting thing is I haven't been able to weigh myself and I still haven't weighed myself because we only got back in late last night. 
um, and we kind of ate late. And then this morning, like our food has been all out of all, wha all out of whack. So I have. We don't no have idea. a kitchen. We don't so. have a kitchen either because <laughs> we're renovating. So. I have no data for my weight, but I do have data for my intakes and I can also see how I look. Um, and I've, I've probably put on maybe half a kilo or something since being away, maybe a kilo at most. I believe you said you were 8,000 pounds. Yeah, 8,000 pounds, I think. <laughs> so that being said, um, I have one more week. So we were gonna start my contest prep on the 13th of August. So is that two weeks? One. July, sorry, sorry, July, 13th of July. So, is that two weeks away? That would be about uh, three weeks away. It's the 26th today of June. Right, so it's about three weeks, just under three weeks. So I have just under three weeks, so that's two full weeks more of reverse dieting. Um, now, I would really like to keep pushing up, onwards and up, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to keep going up this week. Well, I don't think you need to go up from 2400. No, 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 I'm just going to actually come up to 24, so yeah. I think last, uh, the previous update, my macros were uh, 165 protein, uh, 230 carbohydrates and 72 grams of fat. This week I'm going to come up, uh, protein will say the same, but my carbohydrates I'm going to take up to uh, 204, sorry, my carbohydrates I'll take up to 240 uh, and my fats I'll bring up to 78. So I think that's going to be just shy of 2400. Uh, any particular reason you're emphasizing fat so much over carbohydrate? Great question. Uh, okay, so looking at my food choices uh, for the last two weeks, um, I've been going over my fat macros most. Mm. So I've been sitting around 80 grams uh, while we're away. Um, I know I can probably scale that back, but I think um, just with the foods that I have been having, they are a little bit higher in, in fat. So yeah, I'm, I'm just going to nudge my fats up because I haven't actually been hitting my carb targets. Okay. Yeah, so that's just my preference and everybody will be different. It's not that fats are better for me to increase or carbs are better. It's, that's just where my food choices kind of are lying at the moment, so, yeah. So I guess we'll see how you go this week with your weight and yep. your, your training sessions and yep. uh, your adherence, and then we'll uh, have more data to show next week and be able to make a, a better uh, judgment of where you're at. Yes, yeah, so I'll take my weight every day this week and uh, get all my planned training programs in. I'm just so excited to get back and have some kind of structure, which is really nice. I do much better when I can um, have a bit of a routine with, with all that. So, yeah. Cool. So, I guess we'll see you guys next week. We're back. And uh, make sure you like and subscribe to her videos and mine. And we're going to be pumping out a lot of great content for you over the next, the last half of this year. Thanks, guys.